One thing I will give credit to the Lofty Castle, it uh, hosts a plethora of new gameplay mechanics, one, and new enemy types, two, exclusive to the Lofty Castle. Uh, the first of which I actually do enjoy, based on the title alone. Uh, these are the unofficially titled uh, Potbellied Pigs. Uh, Angel-winged creatures that I think share the same model as the Fools and Spyro for wings, but I like to think of it as uh, When Pigs Fly, being this is a dream-based area. Uh, they do fly around in a predetermined path, and if they come into your path, or rather vice versa, they'll just take a nip out of your bud. Uh, because they're short enemies, uh, you can charge right through them or flame them as I do. Uh, the second creature I'm sure you've no doubt uh, taken note of, the Balloon Nork, who is defying several laws of physics. Uh, he's got his balloon, and it raises and lowers him in a predetermined pattern. I suppose he could be holding on to some type of inflation-deflation mechanism that allows him to float up and down like that, but there's no way that balloon could be holding that weight. If you pop the balloon, he falls to his death. I guess the balloon was actually the thing that Nasty Nork turned into a minion because it gives us a gem. The balloon Nork just was there to hold it in place for us. Now, we actually haven't gotten to the new mechanic yet. Oh, I guess I could have taken that up there. But, this is a challenge one. Where's the fun in that? Now, from here, I will actually be traveling to another platform. This is not the end of Lofty Castle, or else I would actually enjoy it a lot more. Because the new mechanic in this level is actually something I'm not a fan of. You remember very far back to the High Caves level in Magic Crafters, where these gold fairy models actually saved us from falling to our deaths. Now it uh, comes our turn to save them. They're trapped in these wooden, magic wooden boxes. And if we free them, they will, uh, if we free them, that's a big if, they will gather on a disc like this and form a multicolored whirlwind of happiness that will transport us to a place that we're supposed to be going next. Now, why I say that's a big if is the whirlwind is sort of in an opportune place for me. Uh, as in, if I wanted to make a running jump rather than ride the whirlwind, it would be in my way of doing so. Uh, that's a bit of a tricky jump. I'm not sure if I want to attempt that from up there or down here. But if I did make the whirlwind, there is no going back. Even if you die, even if you exit the level and return, uh, the whirlwind will still be there and there's nothing you can do about fixing that. So, just keeping our odds open, you can always go one way but not the other. Let's just leave the fairies uh, captured for now, but since two out of three fairies can't actually do diddly magic, let's just go ahead and free those so you understand what the uh, animation and sound effects sound and look like as I attempt to plummet another Nork to his death. Not so difficult, keeping in mind we have to stop short of the box, elsewise we free the third fairy and cause the entire whirlwind debacle. Uh, the blue Nork's only attack is waving a shield at us. That's not how you're supposed to use a shield. Those are for defense. Uh, so as you can see, I was foreshadowing this quite uh, heavy-handedly, ham-fistedly. Uh, we have to cross this gap. Uh, if we waited for the whirlwind, uh, we would have to use the glide. Because if we held charge during it, we would plummet to our deaths, much like the balloon norks. We don't have a balloon, sparks, not inflatable. Let's go for it. If we bounce at the very edge of the platform, and we hit the corner at exactly the right angle, and hit the landing corner at the very right angle, we can actually make it, and thankfully get a checkpoint. Adadum. Fairies are always on your side, Spyro. I'm just thankful to make it this far through the Lofty Castle. Now, if we fall down, we'll actually be 
pretty boned, so let's not do that. Instead, uh, if we break open the two chests and kill the two cupids up here, we can be boned in quite a different way. Oh. And I was neither gained nor uh, harmed from that, so let's just pretend it didn't exist, okay? Okay. <clears throat> and now we can go ahead and bone ourselves by jumping down and uh, contending with all the things down here. Including more cupids, which I guarantee are not lethal. Even if they do trick you into freeing fairies that actually need to be freed. Oh no! Back up. This is a momentous occasion. What is lying uh, in front of me is actually a very unique instance of an object. It is the only one in the entire game. It is a red spring jewel chest. And it is no more. Um, notable only because it's worth the least. Uh, one more fairy, and you can actually see that their whirlwind is slightly different from uh, the norm. As soon as I get the magic mushrooms, cross the river, collect one more one-up to satiate my worries. Note that I will not actually be collecting the key for this level. The lockbox uh, will ever, forever remain here. Spoilers, but uh, I'm never coming back down here. You can see that the fairies whirlwind is a multitude of colors where the other one is only white and blue. This one's got burgundy and green mixed in? How exotic. Um, ignoring the infinitely spawning spawning pool of spawning water, which is parading around in quite a textured uh, mass of pattern. I must be dreaming. That's the only logical explanation for this. We see before us a split path. Uh, neither one is necessarily raised higher than the other so far that we cannot jump from one to the other. So I will... Uh, I'll take this path first. For certainly no reason, I'm not going to explain later on. Uh, these birds are quite... Uh, unique in the fact that there are four of them doing the exact same thing. Uh, know that they can hover in mid-air while flying and trick us into charging into a Cupid's arrow if they weren't just dumb birds. Ignoring the whirlwind we can hear off screen to collect this one up up the steps and turning around to view nothing like a supercharged ramp coming out of the tower uh, let's see what this whirlwind takes us to before we uh, deal with anything on the ground floor. Just a couple of gems. Uh, we can see a floating box with a fairy in it. I'm not sure if the wood itself is the magical property keeping that thing afloat, or if the fairy is just uh, holding it up while she flies. If she's strong enough to hold one third of Spyro, as canonized in the high caves, uh, I'm sure she could lift up that plywood box. And a balloon nork guarding her uh, two-thirds of the time, one-third of the time. So, understandably, what we need to do here is bounce off of the balloon uh, and charge through the fairy box. And I'm sure you can see where this is going. If we could glide, we could go in a spiral around the pillar in the middle of the thing, uh, flaming open all of the balloons and all of the fairies. I can flame open one fairy and charge open the other, but that's not enough to make a whirlwind or two-thirds of a whirlwind. That's not how it works. I can look up slightly and flame, but it's not uh, good, enough an good enough of an angle, or the draw distance just isn't that good on my flame to actually reach this box. And Spyro's head does not stay upwards if I jump afterwards, so jumping actually makes it worse. And, I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this, I cannot actually uh, charge, jump, run, flame to it from up here. I think I can, I think I can actually just reach the balloon. And that's five more gems for me, but that's not much. If I could get the third fairy, I would unlock a lot more of the level because there's a supercharge. And if there's a supercharge in a level, I can pretty much go anywhere I'm not supposed to be gliding to. Also, at the top of there is a dragon and a key. If I were to ride the supercharge down, 
uh, it would come out on this end of a ramp, land on that ramp, loop around uh, this castle here, and go flying me off onto this platform, which is too high for me to jump to from down here, which has some gems on it. I could continue the supercharge over that platform and down onto the ground where the lockbox was, thus uh, circumventing the key entirely, but we need the key to get to the supercharge, so it's a moot point. <clears throat> Back to the fork where uh, the road was less traveled because it's sort of a disjointed collection of platforms. Uh, in the distance, the last dragon will be collecting for this level, a uh, fairy and some gems. And a balloon, and more fairies, and a whirlwind we're not going to be able to take because I spoiled it. It to rab. Thank you for releasing me. Thank you for sounding so familiar to uh, the other dragons in this world backwards. I'm sure it's just a collection of vowels, really. They all sound like magic spells. Uh, go figure. Less than the magic crafters world, but more than the peacemakers world. Uh, yeah, if you ride this up there, uh, you'll end up in the river. Don't do that. Um, actually, I think if I can make the... If I can make the jump from the Dark Hollows platform in the Dreamweaver's Overworld uh, to the part with the uh, lofty castle in it, I think I can make this jump. But not from this distance. Surely I just do it from the higher distance and it's not even a problem. Doesn't even need to be sized up. But, as we learned before, do not go breaking fairy boxes until you're sure that you're not going to uh, need the platform uninhibited. The other whirlwind that they give us for free leads up to a spire with a whole three gems on it. Luckily, we did not need to glide from this point. Now, you'll see out in the distance is a platform with the final fairy for this section, uh, and the balloonist, and a couple of fan boxes. Not balloonist, balloon norks. There's a difference. And you'll see in the distance, uh, quite a ways away. It's hard to show the camera-wise how distance-wise away it is. But believe me, it's too far to jump to. You can't even get close. And since we're down here, we can't actually get back to the platform uh, that is shaped somewhat like a hearing aid from the 1930s, I'm guessing. But we, it's a moot point because we couldn't reach the fairy platform anyway. Take my word for it in video format. And with that, uh, that's everything we can collect from the Lofty Castle without gliding, which is a lot more than you can collect from the Lofty Castle without gliding, so I don't want to hear any complaints. Back in the homeworld, we can see the final balloonist and the gems we did not give to him. And make sure that I've killed everything on the way there, because I don't want to miss out on any gems. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm just going to stand next to these enemies and let you listen for five seconds. These are invincible enemies, uh, and they will never be shot by the man firing the rings at the enemies. Uh, means we can never actually go up the stairs. Or so you'd think. There's You can... Don't worry about it. Uh, instead, uh, time this exactly right and put an end to their sound effects with some sound effects of your own. In the distance, uh, we'll see more sound effects just waiting to happen. Uh, this time in the form of sh little carrot top monks. Got to make sure to get these names right. I don't want fire. You see that I actually charged him, and he got turned at the same point he got charged. So he did get charged as a tall enemy or midway between the two uh, let's just hold charge through these whirlwinds and hope for the best not gliding technically not gliding and it's gonna drop us into the pit if we don't hold right thankfully this platform was lower it did not need to be uh, it just put there for this purposes Amakiz hello Spyro nicely done I'll be done when I've toasted that nasty Nork you tell him, Spyro. But for now, we actually have more pressing matters. Uh, the cannon makes you tall and small, and there is no way that he is going to fire it at Spyro to turn him into an adult dragon so he could stomp and squish and charge and flame and 
uh, fly with actual wings rather than glide everywhere in the level in the game and beat up Nasty North that way. So we must commandeer the cannon ourselves. Uh, uh, there we go. It wouldn't have mattered because there's a checkpoint right before there. And he's just programmed to face towards you as best he can, which means he doesn't actually do damage to you even if he touches you. So we can do this. And there's absolutely nothing he can do about it. And if we jump over him, we can get him to form a little dance for us. Everybody give a hand to Carrot Top Monk with the cannon. He's gonna need it where he's going. Now, we have the control of the cannon. Uh, if you think back very far to uh, the Peacemaker's home world, we can control it just like that. Uh, we convert the fire into magic through this little or orifice at the end of the cannon. And it shoots out rings uh, auto-targeted distance, just like the cannonballs, to uh, anything we're pointing it at. So let's just go ahead and make sure that every single creature is in the small form before we leave. And if we don't get both of those, then we can never get all the gems. And if we look through that wall, something is clipping there. We can actually shoot it, but because it's not a uh, Carrot Top Monk or Slap Happy Armored Monk, it doesn't change shape or size. And of course, because we have to fire the cannon from the end of the f cannon, we can't actually be in front and get hit by the beam. Sadly enough, that is not the mechanic of this world. Rather, uh, I'm going to leave those small for now because I cannot reach that platform one, and I can reach this platform two, which has the favorite level of the game. Quite possibly, most assuredly, just through this hallway. And it would be a huge inconvenience if there were a tall metal creature in here because it cannot be reached by the cannon. Thankfully, they were kind enough to put them all outside. Now, lying ahead of us, the Haunted Towers is the heavily foreshadowed uh, favorite level of the game, but you're going to have to hold off because around the corner are 10 gems. And around the other corner is a hypnotic texture. And five gems. Scratch that, four gems. And I'm just trying to build up as much anticipation as possible for the Haunted Tower, so let's go ahead and clear out the rest of this section down here. So it'll be, uh... Oh. Rather than that, I'm actually going to uh, explain this little happy jolly fellow here. You can see that this fairy fool actually has fairy wings, rather than the lantern fools of Dark hollow which dark passage which had uh, demon wings slash dragon wings uh, fairies and dragons uh, opposite forces of the same coin in spire of the dragon land uh, since uh, the archway will give me a checkpoint I'm gonna save that dragon for later on instead entering the haunted towers